Yo, thank you, Frumily. We are back with another recap of our favorite Don't Go Out at Night show from. I'm your host, Anthony, and I'm going to do my best to be your guide in this week's episode as we're picking up where we left off last week with Frank camping overnight in the box. This week's episode is titled A Rock in a Far Away. Now, the phrase a rock and a hard place from which this seems inspired is an expression that means being faced with a difficult and challenging situation where one has to choose between two equally undesirable options. It conveys a feeling of being trapped with no easy way out. The origin of this phrase can be traced back to the early 20th century in the United States. It was originally used in the context of mining and referred to a worker who was stuck between two immovable obstacles while attempting to mine for minerals or precious metals. One obstacle was the rock, and the other obstacle would be the hard place, a narrow passage with little room to maneuver. Over time, the phrase became more commonly used in a figurative sense to describe any challenging situation where one faces two difficult choices or options with no clear solution. Between a rock and a faraway seems like a fun play on the phrase, but definitely fitting considering the circumstances of the residents of From Town as we talk more about this show. But first, do me a favor. If you're new here, please consider giving this channel a like and subscribe to keep up with our weekly From analyses and breakdown and enable notifications so you're able to watch these videos right after they publish in order to help get you prepared for season two. This week's episode starts off with a little boy holding Victor's lunchbox and climbing out of that cellar outside of town we saw Jade visit the last episode. This is that same cellar where he saw the Zuck lookalike crushed by a boulder. This whole scene is very eerie but interesting as the kid that's climbing out of the cellar is covered in dirt and we can hear a dog barking in the distance. What we see next is even more interesting as we see pieces of bodies laid out on the floor in front of him. We then switch to an adult Victor sitting in the living room in Colony House drawing Julie in crayon as she sleeps. He asks her the weirdest question when he goes, you know how sometimes you dream and you forget, but then later you start to remember and you realize it wasn't in dream and maybe all of it really happens? I think I'm starting to remember things, things that I thought were dreams. And that's when we learned the little boy in the scene right before this one was Victor, at least Victor at a very young age, letting us know that my guy has been here for way, way too long. And also, is it me or does Victor possibly have a crush on Julie? Listen, I, I know, I know, but let's really observe Victor's actions with and around Julie moving forward because I think my guy here right, might be smitten. Victor then shows Julie his drawing and tells her that she can keep it if she wants and then just walks off. We then see Trudy greeting Julie as she wakes up and asks if she can have her pillow back. Julie gives it to her but notices that Trudy is wearing a shirt that looks like hers and she learns it actually is Julie's and that Trudy went through her luggage and took it. And what? <laughs> Yo, boundaries people. We then switch to Sheriff Boyd bringing a wheelbarrow to the box to grab all of the pieces and parts of Frank that were left behind. You can see that they handled Frank a lot like they handled his wife Lauren with both of his legs ripped to pieces with one of his feet over in the corner and his entire chest cavity ripped open which we can only guess is also like his wife and Frank no longer has his organs. Gruesome scene. <laughs> Yuck. We then switch to the diner and we see Sarah entering the diner to find Mrs. Lou sitting at the counter crying alone. Interestingly, she speaks to Sarah in another language as she still seems like she doesn't speak any English. We then switch to Jim and Tabitha in the kitchen of their new home, with Tabitha unsure if she slept at all, but she knows she made some tea. Tabitha talks about how she used to love this time of morning and sometimes he would stop crying just as the sun was coming up. She then asks her husband if he thinks that they are being punished. She talks about their situation and is really stressed out about everything. Ethan hobbles in with his crutch and starts talking to his mom and dad when Jim suggests that he and Ethan head to the diner for breakfast while Tabitha stays behind to unpack. We then switch back to Sheriff Boyd seemingly having gathered all of Frank from the box, loading him up in his wheelbarrow before wheeling him through town. Jim and Ethan walk out of their home at the right time and Ethan hilariously blurts out, Hi Sheriff, what's in the cart? <laughs> 
Sheriff rightfully lies to the little boy and just says that it's supplies he needs to, you know, bring to Father Katri. And this whole scene here just tickles me. Yo, sometimes From has some good, dark, dry humor, and this is it. And I, I love it. I do. We then switch to inside the diner where we see one of those radio jukebox thingies on the table just start playing on its own again. I can't quite make out the song that's playing, and neither can my iPhone. But if anyone is able to make this one out, please do me a favor and let me know in the comments so I can shout you out in an upcoming video. Anyway, Sarah greets Jim and Ethan as they enter and seats them at a booth. Ethan asks Sarah for pancakes and says that she'll check with Mrs. Lou. Jim asks if Mrs. Lou is the one whose husband passed away the other night. And yo, this whole scene is very awkward for Sarah, you know, all things considered. We then switch to Sheriff Boyd and Father Kadri meeting up outside the church. Father Kadri examines the body and just goes, they don't leave much, do they? And Sheriff Boyd is just telling him to make sure he's buried next to his family. They actually exchange a few jabs with Boyd seeming not interested in sticking around for the service and asks the priest if he's going to mention that he's the one that wanted him dead in his sermon and damn. <laughs> We then switch to Deputy Kenny and Jade meeting up outside of town, outside that dang cellar again. Jade asks Kenny to follow him inside to show him something, and as they enter, Jade starts manically explaining what it was that he saw when he was last here. Kenny looks very skeptical, but Jade tells him that it wasn't a hallucination. He does a lot of drugs. He, he knows what he saw. Jade then mentions that he thinks there has to be an explanation, and nobody seems to be looking for it. Kenny suggests that they go back to the sheriff's station so he can show him something, and Jade slowly follows. We then switch back to the diner with Mrs. Lou bringing Ethan the biggest, fluffiest, most mouth-watering stack of pancakes I've ever seen since I, I didn't eat breakfast today. Ethan gives it a, whoa. <laughs> something that's interesting to me is that now Mrs. Lou seems to be sprinkling in some English in her dialogue. She says the word pancakes, while serving the food to Ethan, but she also pinches his cheek and says, enjoy, before walking away. You know, it's good that she's picking up some English so quickly. Ethan begins eating his food, but he asks his dad, do we live here now? With Jim quickly saying, no, 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 it's more like a vacation. When Ethan starts dropping some of those important clues, remember Ethan, Ethan, pay attention. He says, I think it's probably a quest like a hero's quest, like Norman had to go in the Lake of Tears. We probably have to save somebody if we want to go home. That's what Norman had to do. Sometimes I pretend that's where Thomas went, that he's on a magical quest, and if I try, I can help him save the kingdom. Remember what I said last week, we need to pay close attention to Ethan. I think Ethan's book Flight of the Cromenacle is a direct parallel for this situation in From Town, and he is dropping major clues on how these characters can go home. He mentions that someone may need to be saved, and he mentions that sometimes he thinks that's where Thomas went. We need to keep paying attention to Ethan, all right? This whole conversation seems to really, really disturbing for Jim, with him taking a moment to go into the restroom, cry for a sec, and then gather himself. We then switch to Tabitha, still in the house, seemingly beginning to unpack a suitcase. We switch back to Ethan sitting at the diner eating his pancakes when Victor walks in and tells Ethan that the trees have moved four inches. Ethan is confused and asked if that is a good or bad with Victor telling him they're close, so it's bad. Victor then tells Ethan that there's something he needs to show him and whips out one of his drawings. He shows Ethan a drawing of the boy in white, with Ethan giving the correct answer when he's wondering why this grown-ass man is drawing things in crayon. Victor seems genuinely confused by the question and isn't sure why it matters that the drawing is in crayon. Ethan confirms that the drawing is the boy that he saw, and Victor seems relieved that the boy was real. Jim then returns to the booth and sees Victor sitting down talking to Ethan, and Jim goes all tough guy on Victor, telling him not to go near Ethan or talk to him, and then throws Victor out of the diner like Uncle Phil did jazz, and then tells Ethan it's time to go. We then switch to Julie sitting in a room, alone, looking sad. Fatima enters the room and asks what's wrong, with Julie realizing that she made a mistake by choosing Colony House. 
Fatima says some words to cheer her up a bit and then takes Julie by the hand to take her somewhere. We then switch to Jim and Ethan returning home with Ethan upset that Jim mishandled Victor like that. We then switch back to Julie and Fatima with Fatima helping Julie find clothes on the laundry line for her to try on. We then see Tabitha walking toward them with Julie crossing her arms and walking to find out why Tabitha is there. She tells Julie that they miss her and brings her a sweater. Tabitha tries to convince Julie to come back to town with her and Julie has a teenage moment where she feels her mom is being condescending. Julie spazzes on her mom a bit and mentions how she knew that her parents were planning on getting a divorce and how this whole trip was just one last thing to do together before they broke the news. Tabitha tries to talk to her but Julie continues teenaging against her and says, Thomas is dead. You have two other kids. And damn, Julie, damn! She really not pulling any punches right now and is getting everything off her chest. Julie then storms off and heads back to Colony House with Fatima agreeing to make sure Julie gets her sweater. We then switch back to the police station where we see Deputy Kenny and High Guy Jade looking at a map that identifies where the residents were when they saw the tree that brought them to front town. From what they can tell, everyone was traveling on different roads in different parts of the country before they arrived. Jade laughs a bit and monologues about how he's going to figure it out. Kenny warns him that Jade will lose his mind if he goes down that path. Kenny also warns him that the monsters aren't the hardest part and it's actually how this place makes you question everything you know. When suddenly the dispatch radio just crackles and makes a noise with Kenny dismissing it and saying, yeah, it does that sometimes. Jade doesn't say a word and just swipes the radio and rushes out the door with it in hand. We then switch to Jim sitting on his porch looking at Victor's drawing of the boy in white. Tabitha walks up and they begin talking. Jim shares that Ethan is mad at him and Tabitha is sharing that her interaction with Julie went great and tells Jim that Julie knows about the divorce. They begin having an argument right on the porch with Ethan inside able to overhear. We then see Victor knocking at the back window and signals for Ethan to come outside. They meet up in the back of the house and Victor is telling Ethan that they need to go find the boy in white and find out why he's back. Ethan sees it as a quest and agrees to go with Victor. Strangely enough, Victor tells Ethan that he can't bring the crutch and instead gives him a walking stick to use with my guy Ethan making the transition with no problem. Leg injury? What leg injury? We're all good here. Now let's go on this quest. We then switch to Sheriff Boyd making repairs to the box that Frank was killed in and he gets approached by Father Cotry. They talk a bit with Father Cotry urging Boyd to be a leader and not take blame for Frank, Lauren, and Megan. He then mentions a different she that triggers Boyd all the way off. Boyd is deeply triggered by the priest telling Boyd that he needs to be a leader and gives him a nice pep talk about how Boyd needs to be the one to lead these people whole. Boyd doesn't respond and pretends to be repairing the box a bit more when the priest leaves and we see that his hand, Boyd's hand, starts shaking again. We then switch back to Ethan and Victor, this time going on their quest while looking for the boy in white in the woods. Victor talks about how it's been a long time since the boy in white went away and the first time he saw him was right before the first two cars came and how he wasn't much older than Ethan when they first came. Victor also shares that for a long time there wasn't anybody else there in from town but him. Ethan asks about Victor's parents and Victor doesn't want to talk about it. Not at all. Stop asking about his parents. Ethan apologizes and shares that he used to have a little brother, Thomas, but he died when he was a baby. Victor gets bothered by the news and then suddenly they hear footsteps in the forest and actually see the boy in white walking through the woods. We then switch back to Tabitha walking in the house and Jim comes in a few moments after asking if they can finish talking. Tabitha doesn't want to talk and instead says that she will take Ethan to see Julie and begins calling for him. Jim sees the back door open and they find his crutch lying on the ground and they begin to panic. We switch back to Victor and Ethan in the woods and it seems like they lost the boy in white but found a faraway tree. Ethan asks what that is and Victor says he'll show him. Victor picks up a rock, draws a face on it and then drops the rock inside the hollow part of the tree. They wait for a few moments and shockingly the rock falls from the sky. Victor doesn't know how it works, but he tells Ethan that it works for people too. 
The problem is that you never know where you'll end up. You can be someplace close, someplace far, or stuck in the mountain somewhere. He also tells Ethan that there are a bunch of faraway trees. Victor then suddenly starts hearing a dog barking and seems to have had a bad reaction to the sound. Ethan doesn't hear it, but we see memory flashes of a dog barking at young Victor in the middle of town. The creepy part is that the dog is standing next to a corpse that's been ripped in half. Something else is that the corpse on the floor looks like a, you know, a little monsterish. Like, this thing on the floor kind of looks like one of the people creature monsters. Sure, it could just be an ugly resident killed by one of the people creature monsters, but this feels a little different. Normally, when we see the creatures kill, they cut off limbs and they start ripping chests open and gut people from their inside. This guy is literally ripped in half, so it feels a little different. You'll also see that there are other bodies in the background, with some looking like they've had their chest open up. I can't tell if any of the others are ripped in half, but this visual definitely stood out for me. Victor is still freaking out as he hears a dog barking when he tells Ethan that they have to go. We then see Jim and Tabitha walking through the woods looking for Ethan when they get approached and surrounded by barking dogs. Victor shows up and fires a gun in the sky, scaring off the dogs. Jim loses his shit and is ready to pounce on Victor when he finds Victor and Ethan in the woods alone. Tabitha urges Jim to leave with her because Victor's got a gun. And we, we learn that he carries that with him in his lunchbox at all times. It's always on it. He always got that thing on him. We then switch to Victor back in Colony House, frantically looking through his drawings. I can't help but notice this painting he has on the wall of some white guy with black eyes. This picture looks creepy as all what, but it doesn't look like Victor's art style. Now, I used to study art. I dabble in art. I can draw. So I think I have a decent eye for identifying an art style. And this looks very different from the crayon drawings that we see from Victor. Who or what is the guy in white? Victor finally finds what he's looking for when he finds a cartoon drawing of the dog that was barking and while this is happening we get some cool flashback moments sprinkled in of young Victor alone in town with the boy in white and the dog. He's alone because everyone is freaking dead and there are corpses everywhere. The boy in white leads Victor in a merry-go-round in front of Ethan's house that we used to see Megan play on and he begins spinning on it before outright vanishing into thin air. We then switch back to Victor's room where he's been hanging up his drawings and he even has a drawing of all the dead bodies littered across town. We then switch to Boyd finishing up repairs on the box when Jim approaches him and tells him that he's got a problem with Victor. He tells him about the drawings, the woods, and the gun in the lunchbox with Boyd promising to talk to Donna about it. Boyd then suggests that they get to know each other a little better and asks what he's got planned for dinner. We then switch to Fatima and Julie walking through Colony House with Fatima and Ellis giving Julie her very own space to sleep in their room. Julie is thrilled, but yo, is that that same painting we were talking about before with the white mouth monster in the corner and the two naked people? Yup, that's that, and I feel like this show is going out of its way to keep this image in our minds. Yeah, this, this feels very important. Julie is so happy to get her own space and thanks Fatima and Ellis for her new bed. Fatima then gives Julie with the sweater that Tabitha brought by earlier. We then switch to Sheriff Boyd, grooming himself in a mirror and seemingly getting prepared for dinner with the Matthews when he just screams at the top of his lungs in the mirror. We then quickly switch to Sheriff Boyd, Tabitha and Ethan all enjoying a meal together at the diner. Sarah then brings a plate of food to the VIPs and asks Ethan if he wants to help bring the rest of the food. He agrees and Sarah even comments how Ethan is walking better now. All of a sudden that radio jukebox thing that does it, it, it does it again and it turns on by itself and begins playing a song. And I can't identify this song either so if you guys can identify this song please let me know in the comments. I'll shout you out in a future video. Jim then apologizes to Tabitha for his behavior and tells her that he just feels broken. Tabitha consoles him a bit and tells him that they're going to figure it out together. Ethan then returns to the table with a big bowl of sweet potatoes. 
We then see Mrs. Lou and Sarah standing behind the counter with Mrs. Lou commenting, in English no less, nice family. <laughs> As Mrs. Lou walks off, out of nowhere, Sarah starts feeling pain in her arm and the words kill the boy appear on her skin like, like her veins are rearranging to show the letters. Sarah takes two steps forward when she collapses on the floor and starts seizuring. We then switch to Victor outside of Colony House digging holes. All of Colony House is freaked out with Donna coming over to ask Victor what he's doing. And he says, I was just trying to get a head start this time. And the camera pans out to reveal that Victor just dug six new graves outside of Colony House. And then, end credits. And wow, yo, this was a pretty cool episode with a lot of new things being explored. We saw a young Victor, the boy in white, the dog, and they have a history together in town. Jade is on a mission to solve the mystery of town and figure out where they are. Jim and Tabitha are in a bad place and are headed toward divorce after the passing of their son Thomas, and their other son, Ethan, sometimes pretends Thomas is on a quest. This is a lot to take in with a lot more clues coming fast in this episode with more to explore in the next episode. And I can't wait to discuss that with you guys next week. But first, do me a favor. If you're new here, please, 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 please hit that like, hit, hit the like button, okay? Hit the like button. This way you can let me and YouTube know that you like the content that I'm putting together. YouTube still uses this in 2023 to help channels like mine grow and I'm really